It sounds like I hate the rhymes. It's way better than Edge V1, but I would... Hey everyone and welcome back on the channel. My name is Alex and in today's video we are comparing data and metrics for all the carbon plated shoes that released in Q2 2022 and overall there's just a Puma faster missing but these are the 2022 carbon shoes that have released um, to this date. Very exciting stuff. If you want to find out about uh, very low key metrics, weight, um, drops, stack heights, I will not go through these here in this video. We'll focus on um, running metrics. If you want to figure out these sort of low key metrics, go check the shoe super tool on the website, metaendurance.com. I will put the link here somewhere in the video and in the description uh, so you can go compare the shoes for these metrics and that includes the durometer scores. Let's go right now into um, the running metrics to figure out which one is most efficient, which one is the most stable and all sort of, sort of stuff like this. Let me explain you quickly the test that I did. So it was five by two kilometers, so two kilometers in each shoe. So paces at which I tested the shoes during the five by two K uh, test. 346 per kilometer, 343, 344, 343 and 342. By the way, the shoes are Saucony and Dolphin Pro 3, Adidas Adios Pro 3, Metaspeed Sky Plus from ASICS, Nike Alpha Fly 2 and Metaspeed Edge Plus from ASICS as well. That's for the pace in miles, that's about six minutes per mile. Let's look at the cadence, 176, 40 and Dolphin Pro 3, 176, 176, 175 and 178 with the Edge Plus which is the cadence version of the Metaspeed Plus from ASICS. So I have a higher cadence. Is it because I'm biased and I'm increasing my cadence with this shoe or is it really helping runners to uh, with higher cadences to have something a bit more natural? It doesn't feel super natural at 178 for me at this pace. These shoes feel more natural in terms of cadence for me. Ground contact time and that's a good proxy for responsiveness. We're looking at 215 milliseconds, 210, 213, 214 and 213. All the shoes are super close one to each other. The Adios Pro 3 surprisingly appears to be the most responsive based on ground contact time. I would have said that it's the Metaspeed Sky Plus, but the numbers show that it's the Adios Pro 3. Bounciness, and for that we use uh, max pronation to toe off um, as a proxy. And the lower the better, so the lower the bounce here, 153 for the Endorphin Pro 3, 147, 150, 150 and 150. And again, the bounciest shoe appears to be the Adios Pro 3 very interesting as well. Power and that's super super interesting because power is a good proxy for efficiency so the lower the power the less energy you use to move at a certain pace and yes there is one second difference uh, per kilometer in paces between the shoes but overall it's the same ballpark marathon pace 276 watts 281 278 273 and 280 so Alpha Flight 2 is the most efficient it feels like it and it's known based on different studies that the Alpha Fly 2 is quite efficient in terms of VO2 compared to VO2 max percentage and um, overall power consumption. And here it seems to go in that direction. Adios Pro 3, very bouncy, very responsive according to numbers, but a bit less efficient than the others. Quite interesting. One very interesting metric as well is shock. So shock is a mix of two things. The braking, so how much energy you use when you land and you brake. And also how much energy you, um, basically the leg pounding. So that's, that's shock. It's the combination of these two things. It's expressed in Gs. And so we're looking at 13 and a half for the Endorphin Pro 3, 14, 13.8. 15.4 and 14.6. So despite feeling like very leg saving, the um, Alpha Fly seems to be the shoe with which I, with my gait cycle, running style and foot strike, have the highest leg bounding. And that's quite interesting. Is it because there is so much foam that I feel like I can go, you know, press on the ground and land like crazy because nothing will happen to me? Maybe it's also the geometry of the shoe and many other factors come into play. So I'm just sharing. And so the, the most leg saving shoe here appears to be the Endorphin Pro 3. 
which kind of makes sense because it feels a bit like, it reminds me a bit of the RC Elite V2 from New Balance, um, which was quite leg like, saving and that similar type of foam. So that makes sense. Now let's look at the foot strike type. So it's a metric ranging from zero, which is, which corresponds to the uh, heel here to 15, the forefoot. And so the number you have is like a scale going from zero to 15 to um, express where you land based on the run scribe pods metrics. So 8.2 here, 8.6, very mid foot, which is weird because I think my foot strike is moving a bit from uh, forefoot to mid foot with time, which isn't a bad thing because I think a nice mid foot strike can be very efficient. But just, you know, if you look at last year's video, my foot strike numbers were more in the 10s, 11s, 12s, very much here in the forefoot and now it's moving a bit backwards. 8, 2, 8, 6, 9, 9, 2, 8, 5. So um, Alpha Flight 2 is the shoe with which I have the, the foot strike the most oriented towards the forefoot. And on the other side of the spectrum, heel striking or at least midfoot towards the heel with the Endorphin Pro 3 but very, very similar metrics with all the five shoes. Pronation, pronation is not a bad thing. I say it time and time again in these videos, but it's a good way of understanding the motion that you are encountering with your feet and how much um, pronation you have. Can be interesting and can be a proxy for injury risk, but that's even more the case for pronation velocity, which we will come to in a second. But first pronation, 24.6 degrees, 21.3 degrees, 23.3 degrees, 25.7 degrees, and 23 degrees. So based on that, the shoe with which I have the most pronation going on, and so which you could consider as the less stable is the Alpha Fly, and the most stable shoe is the Adios Pro 3. That makes sense, it's a very angular geometry, and I'm not a huge fan of the ride, how it feels, but it feels stable. It's much more stable than Adios Pro 2, or at least a bit more stable because of the, the increased um, width in the platform. And, you know, beveled heel and all that geometry provides you with a nice pronation control, which some people don't need or don't want. Again, pronation is not a bad thing as long as you are prepared and you, your body is prepared to um, sort of uh, accumulate it and not risk an injury because of that pronation. Now, pronation velocity, so basically the speed at which you are pronating expressed in degrees by second. So the faster you are pronating, the higher the injury risk. That's what research shows. 790, so 790 degrees per second in the um, Endorphin Pro 3, 700, 747, 838, 796. So again, Alpha Fly seems to be the most dangerous in terms of injury risk based on that metric. And Adios Pro 3, again, has the, the um, sort of less, uh, least amount of speed when pronating in the shoe. Again, because it is more controlled in terms of pronation because of the different features that the shoe has. Now let's jump into the section that you all like. One word to describe each shoe, but first, before that, if you're enjoying this video, like it, subscribe, comment. It helps the channel to grow and um, it helps me to produce better content. It helps the team to produce better content because stay tuned, there are some news on that side. Endorphin Pro 3, I would uh, say, it's not a word, but I would say RC Elite V2. It's a bit cheating because can you really say another shoe for the word? Let's say smooth. It's quite smooth um, in terms of ride. It's also the mushiest out of these. Here I would say geometric because it really feels like all those uh, angles and it's a very angular geometry and it feels very geometric even when you're stepping in the shoe and running in it you feel like there are some shapes under your feet i'm not a huge fan of that and so geometric is what i would use here but stable could be another word to describe that metaspeed sky plus feels very snappy very snappy for this efficient how not to say efficient here you feel efficient um, but also dangerous in the sense that ZoomX is collapsing a bit more. I am pronating more. Again, myself, my stride, my gait cycle. It doesn't mean that it correlates and it translates to you and your style of running. But for me, I think this is, if I'm not prepared for that amount of pronation and pronation velocity, the Alpha Fly used too much or used, um, you know, every day running in the Alpha Fly wouldn't be sound because of that. Running a marathon could work because it's just a one-off race. 
but something to keep in mind. Edge Plus feels um, low to the ground and I know I'm cheating because I'm saying several words for each shoe, but low to the ground and I would say something like, um, it's tricky because I, it's not like I hate the rides, it's way better than Edge V1, but I would say not adapted for me, especially when compared with the Sky Plus. And that again is with my cadence and my style of running and all of that. So that's for one word. Now, which shoe would I use for each distance? 5K, I would, I would really go with the, the Sky Plus for 5K. 10K, Sky Plus. Half marathon would start to be maybe a switch between Sky Plus and Alpha Fly. And for the marathon, I think I would pick the Alpha Fly. The other three shoes, this I think is a good long run shoe. Long run with some tempo pickups, but I wouldn't race in it. It's a bit too mushy and a bit too, um, despite the numbers, which are good and in the same ballpark as the other shoes, and that's important. But subjectively, I feel less efficient and I feel a bit more sluggish, if that makes sense, in the Endorphin Pro 3. Also, the upper is way less dialed in, a bit too loose for me, especially in the heel. So, yeah, I wouldn't race in it. I just Pro 3, I think it's a good option for the marathon if you need some stability. Again, my preference would go for the Alpha Fly because of the efficiency and I don't need that amount of stability and the ride isn't super pleasant for me and my liking. And Edge Plus, I think it's a great option for, let's say, yeah, 5K could be, you know, a, a decision to be made between Sky Plus and Edge Plus. I'm more a Sky guy because of my style of running, but Edge Plus isn't bad at all for me. It's just a matter of preference and 5K maybe could be interesting in this guy because of the increased cadence that I, I have at 5K pace. But 10K, I would stick with a Sky Plus. I hope you enjoyed this video. Lots of metrics, lots of stuff about these five shoes. Go ahead in the comments, ask any question you may have, like the video, subscribe, all the good stuff. And I will put here somewhere on the screen, Carbon Data Time, the playlist, because we have a playlist for all the Carbon Data Time videos, similar to these data metrics, one word and recommendations. Enjoy your run today, enjoy your ride, and go beyond your limits. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye, guys.